Hey, what is up? So it's been a minute since I've been on camera to talk about an install, but today where I live, it's cold, it's rainy, and I felt like this is the perfect time to just get on camera and go through this most recent setup that I did. And as you can see from the thumbnail, it is a space theme balloon garland install, okay? And let me tell you, I've been wanting to do a space theme setup for so long. Like, since I've started, I've never been requested to do one at all. None of my clients have been interested, but I've been wanting to do it so bad. So when a local event planner reached out to me, she told me she had a first trip around the sun party and asked if I wanted to do the balloons. I was like, yes, of course. Like, I've been waiting to do this forever. You don't even know. But lo and behold, the setup that I've been wanting to do for the longest, when it came time to do it, I had a bunch of problems. I mean, it's okay, it's okay. But um, we gotta talk about it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did this install and kind of talk about some of the things that went wrong, uh, what I'll do differently next time. But first, I also want to show you how I made this super cute planet theme balloon for my, my space. Um, for my install and how you can make it too. It's really easy and it's perfect for that look. So if you wanna see what happened with this install or maybe you just wanna learn how to make this really cute balloon, keep watching. But first, do me a solid. Go ahead and hit that like button, maybe even subscribe. It just lets me know you like content like this and helps me to keep creating more. For our planet balloon, I'm gonna use this Qualitex Agate, our old friend Funky Agate balloons, because it has this beautiful design with the paint that looks like a planet. When it blows up, to me, it looks just like Jupiter, even with the storm in the middle. And the cool thing about it is you can buy one bag, but each balloon may look different, so it adds some diversity to the planets. Before your ring, you're going to use a 260. I really like the metallic look. Blow up your 260 and leave about one to one and a half inch free at the end. And then you're gonna take the tied in and just twist it, another one to one and a half inch. Just twist it around like this, not too many times, just enough to create a little bubble. And then fold it and twist another bubble about the same size, one to one and a half inch. Pinch and twist, really simple. And then you're gonna take that second bubble right there in the middle, you'll see, and twist that around. Until it forms its own little bubble. And this is what we're going to use to anchor our ring onto our planet. So essentially, well, I'll show you in a couple of seconds. You take your planet balloon, Make sure you push it down, let out all of the air so it's nice and round. I've never seen an oval shaped planet, so <laughs> you want it to look like a planet, make it as round as you possibly can, tie it, and you're going to now attach your ring to the knot of the balloon. That way it hides it so that little tail isn't sticking out of your planet. So just wrap it around and tie a knot. This perfectly anchors on the ring, and like I said, hides the tail and makes it look just like a real planet. Now you're going to wrap your ring, your 260, around the balloon just to measure it out to see how long it needs to be to meet the other side. Once you have that measured out to the correct um, length, you'll now pinch and twist right in that area because this is going to be the part that connects to the other side of the ring. So pinch and twist and then wrap it around that bubble that you originally made. And it's okay if the ring falls off while you're doing this, you can just put it back on. As long as it fits correctly, you can just slide it right back on like that. Now we're going to cut these ends. Be careful when you're cutting it, you don't want them to pop. So cut a small slit and slowly release the air like that. And especially with this side, because if you pop it, it's just gonna break apart and you're not gonna be able to use it. So slowly release that air. And then you'll take your two ends and tie them into a knot.
and that way no air is going to escape and you can, if it's long enough, if your ends are long enough, you can even use that to anchor your planet onto your balloons. Like you can use it like a 260, you know? And there you have it. This is a typical five point star, but I picked it because it's that iridescent look and I love the way the light reflects off of it with different colors. It looks better in person. It was like more purple and pink and match all of the rest of the colors. I had to use a few different brands to get the color combination that I really wanted. You can pause it here to look at the name and color of each balloon that I use. I primarily use clusters of six with two 18 inch and four 11 or 12 inch, but I did have a couple of clusters of eight more toward the bottom where they're larger. And I did pre-make my garlands just to give me a visual of the look I was going for. This is when some of the misadventures started happening. So initially this setup was supposed to be indoors, but it was changed to outdoor in the backyard and it was a very windy day. So my bags were blowing all over this big, beautiful yard and balloons were falling out, balloons were popping. Uh, it, was, it was just chaotic. I was like running after my bags of balloons. So I lost a good amount of balloons because you know, once those balloons hit the grass, it's popping time, you already know. Oh, they keep on the grass. This also happened when I installed my garland. Many of the balloons at the bottom were touching the grass and popping. So I kind of just used the bag at first to, to slow it down. I was able to use clips on the side of the backdrop to help hold my garland in place. And you can see this is what I'm doing now. And I did use a 260 to anchor these planet balloons and my other foil balloons onto the clusters. I attached my five inch using different methods. I tried the tie-in method, but I also used, um, I believe 260s or rubber bands, I can't remember. And here I'm just trying to figure out the look that I'm going for. I did make these 12 point uh, starburst and I'm just trying to figure out like, do I wanna use those or do I wanna use those iridescent stars? And I did make these silver balloons, which is just, you know, taking your regular balloon, your silver foil, and then your bobo balloon on top. I want you to look at something, okay? I want you to see the way this backdrop is swaying in the wind. And just keep that in the back of your head as we kind of go through. So this part is pretty straightforward. I'm putting in my decorative balloons, my fillers, planets, foils, and everything like that. And then I did walk away for a couple of minutes and when I turned around, the whole setup fell. And it's funny because this backdrop had stakes and sandbags holding it. So I don't know, I guess it was just like meant to be or something, but there was no real reason for it to fall because it was really anchored in place very well. At this point, I'm really just fighting against the clock. All of these setbacks with the balloons flying away, the backdrop falling and things like that, it really set me back and I'm just trying to get it done. I did add balloons to this really cute bubble house, but I was also asked to add balloons onto this beautiful candy cart. But these balloons, I already had them blown up for the back of the main setup. And because I was using them on the candy cart, I did not add them to the main setup, which left a bit of opening in the arch. And you can kind of see, like I, I don't particularly care for that look where you can kind of like see through on the sides, but I did have to leave it like that because I used those balloons for a different area that it wasn't originally intended for. And this was my final look. So the funny thing is that despite all of the hiccups I encountered, Everyone ended up liking how it came out. I just know what I'll do differently next time. And if you're anything like me and you enjoy these theme party setups, you might like these two other videos that I did, which you can find right here. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.